Hello everyone. Some of the experiment in biology are actually high throughput experiments that generate a higher dimensional data. For example, take the example of microarray or RNA-seq. In these experiments, you are collecting the expression data of hundreds and thousands of genes from one or uh, ten hundreds uh, of samples in one experiment. Now, this is higher dimensional data. The data set itself is a large one and it is, a it is a challenge to visualize this whole data set comprehensively. In this lecture, we will discuss about two method to comprehensively visualize a high throughput higher dimensional data, particularly data coming from experiment like uh, RNA-seq and micro, uh, microarray. These two techniques are a plot of heat map and volcano plot. So, I will start with heat map. I will explain heat map and how to draw it using R uh, using a script that I already have written. What I will do, I will first discuss in the, the data and then I will directly plot the diagram, the heat map and then I will explain what we communicate through heat map and then we will go into nitty gritty and details of how you uh, draw that particular type of figure or plot. So, the data set that I am using, uh, it is a data set coming from a microarray experiment uh, of, for particular type of leukemia, uh, AAL, ALL, uh, particular B cell and T cell ALL and I have downloaded the whole data set. From that data set, I have uh, taken a part of it, uh, only a small part of it with I think 47 or 48 sample data are there, but uh, thousands of uh, features uh, for each of these samples are there and these are uh, for uh, ALL with specific type of type of mutations. Now, we do not need to go into details of that biology. We have to understand that this is a higher dimensional data where I have thousands of microarray features and for each sample we are measuring those features. So, let me first load that data and look into what the data we have. So, I am I, I have uh, curated the data in a, a CSV file. So, I am reading it uh, using read CSV. I am keeping the header true. So, the and the uh, row names, the first column of the uh, this data set has the name of the uh, features or in a way uh, the genes, right. So, that I have specified that these are the row names and I have said the row names equal to 1. So, let me read the data first, okay. So, in the environment tab, let me open it. It may take a few seconds because it's a very large data set because you can see it has 12,625 observation for 47 variable. So, what I have? You can see the columns uh, I have x1005, x3002, these are samples and I have 47 samples, right? 47 patient samples. For each sample, we have microarray feature data and these uh, color row names like for example, 1000 underscore 80 is possibly if I remember correctly is the feature for uh, a particular type of cadherin. Uh, so, this each row is for one of those features in the microarray. So, in a way they represent some gene and you can imagine we have 12,625 such uh, features. Now, how can I visualize this data comprehensively and to do that actually heat maps are very useful. So, what I will do? I will draw the heat map and I will then explain the different elements of the heat map. Now, to draw the heat map, I will use the inbuilt uh, default heat map function co that comes with R and that heat map function takes a matrix as an input or an argument. So, data should be in a matrix format. Right now, the data that I have loaded is in data frame. So, I will convert this data frame into a matrix. So, that is what I do in the, this line where I use data dot matrix this function data dot matrix and I give experiment exp dot data that is the data frame as one argument and then I say that the row names are true. You force the row name to be true so that in the matrix also the row names are retained. That means, I want to retain the row names present in the data frame and remember those row names are nothing but the feature names, right. So, I want to retain that. Uh, so, let me, I uh, will convert it into a matrix and now I have a, a large matrix you can see here in the environment pane. If I double click, you can see that data in the matrix. Remember the car header is also there and the row name are also there. So, now I will draw the heat map and to draw the heat map, 
I will use the default heat map function. The first argument for heat map function is the data itself. Now, D is my data that is the matrix. Just to keep a clarity here, I do not want to create a heat map for all those 12,000 features. I am taking only the first 10 rows that means I am taking only 10 features so that the diagram should be very clean and I will be, uh, uh, be able to explain the diagram easily to you. Otherwise, I, we would have may have taken the whole data set D. So, what I am taking I am saying okay, take uh, the 1 to 10 row for D and I am leaving this column space uh, empty that means all the columns and then there are some arguments I will explain this argument once I uh, create the diagram. I will create the diagram. Uh, let me expand this space for plot tab so that we can visualize the diagram very clearly. So, here is my heat map. What you can see I have uh, the features or gene these are these 1000 underscore 80, 1001 uh, underscore 80 these vertical axis they represent each of these rows represent the feature. And these uh, columns actually represent each of the sample and those samples number are written in the horizontal axis. So, now if you imagine that these rows, rows for feature and the column for a sample they intersect. So, you they have oh, the uh, heat map function has drawn a box there and in that box it has filled the box with a color and that color has a code. So, the lower values in my data set right in my data set D if I have a lower value that is color coded by a faint color, faint yellow. Whereas, the a reading a particular value for a particular feature for a particular sample if it is very high then it is a very dark color. So, by this color code each of these rectangle created by the intersection of sample and the uh, features. So, are filled all of these rectangles are filled with a color. And the color is telling me whether the da data for that feature in that sample is have a high reading or a low reading. For example, if I look into here uh, 1004 underscore 80 row if you go in the middle I have a sample uh, 24010 that is almost white that means that reading is very low. Whereas, for the feature 1008 underscore f underscore 80 the sample here the second sample from the right hand side has a very dark color that means the reading for that feature in that sample is very high. This type of heat map many a time is called spatial heat map. In this uh, heat map the data is arranged as I have provided in my data file in my data matrix. The heat map function has not arranged it using some rule or some uh, other way. Right? So, there is uh, no manipulation done by the heat map. It is essentially just represented the numerical values of the reading by a color that is all. Now, many a times you want to cluster this data each of this gene expression right into different cluster each cluster will have similar behavior. In that case we add the clustering data along with this heat map and we represent the cluster by a hierarchical dendrogram. The heat map function can also do that. That type of heat map will be called cluster heat map. But in this case I have not performed the uh, clustering, I have not drawn the uh, dendrogram that is why when I call the heat map function I have used two additional argument rho v equal to n a and column v equal to n a. These two arguments told the heat map function that okay, I do not want any clustering of the data just draw the spatial heat map without any clustering or the dendrogram. Now, once I have discussed this uh, clustering is, is can be done by heat map why do not we try to do that right. So, I will move into the next section where I will now do no, will not provide this rho v equal to n a and column uh, call v equal to n a rather I will skip those two argument and use the same data set d 1 to 10 rows raise on all the 47 columns and I will call the heat map function. So, here I uh, call that. Now, you can see if I zoom out I have dendrograms both on the horizontal axis also in the vertical axis. 
the vertical axis endogram here which is sparse this is actually clustering the genes and then drawing a hierarchical cluster. That means what this endogram is saying that 1009 underscore 80 and 1008 underscore F underscore 80 they belongs to a same cluster whereas the cluster created by these two genes also belongs to another bigger cluster which has 1005 underscore 80. So, in this way it builds a hierarchical cluster and show that clustering information by a dendogram. We will have a separate lecture where I will discuss about the basic mathematical principles of hierarchical clustering and I will also have a lecture where I will show you how to draw, the, draw this dendogram. For the time being let us use the way heat map has function has provided as a dendogram. Heat map function has certain arguments by which you can manipulate those uh, properties of that dendogram and the clustering you need not to go to them right now whenever you will require for your particular experimental purpose you may look into them. Now uh, looking into these data okay I have two dendogram right but I do not clearly really see any cluster right you, you cluster means there should be gene expression of these clusters will have similar behavior or something like that right we may not be getting that cluster information because we have not scaled the data. By scaling I mean that I if suppose I say scale along the column, column is here in this my heat map is one particular sample and the rows are the genes or the features of the microarray. If I say scale the data for each column that means that I will take the data of a column that means it is coming from one sample and then I will scale each of the features data in that column in such a way that the mean will become 0. So, I will center the data right. So, what I am doing here in the next line, line 25 is that I am calling that heat map function again and I am I want to draw the diagram with dendogram, but now I want to scale the data for each column. So, I am written scale equal to column. If I execute it, you can see there will be change in the diagram. Now, the heat map has a clear color representation of each of these clusters. You can see for 1009 underscore 80 and 1008F underscore 80, the readings are very high for all the samples and that is why they belong to the same cluster as you can see by this dendogram here at the end. Then similarly, if you go down 1002A underscore F underscore 80 and 1006 underscore 80 these two G features they have very low reading once you have scaled the data across all the samples and that is why they belong to a individual cluster. So, now as I have normalized or scaled the data the clustering for this gene becomes much more meaningful. I could have done the scaling across these uh, rows also, but in that case in particular for this exp experiment this way of uh, scaling is much more meaningful. Now once I have scaled and plotted this one, you may wonder this actually I do not want to know the clustering information for these samples. The samples are clustered in the upper histogram here right which is very dense. So, I want to remove that. So, what I am doing here I am saying okay I am again drawing the heat map using the heat map function and I am saying call V equal to N A. So, the columns which are represented in the upper dendogram will not be there right. So, that dendogram will be removed. So, I will remove that dendogram I execute that. Now, the picture is much more cleaner. I have 10 genes or 10 features in each row and each column which are named below in the horizontal axis are each samples and on the left hand side I have the dendogram for all these genes and the color coding is scaled color coding and in this case the color coding the low readings are represented by faint color whereas the uh, higher reading are represented by the dark color. You heat map has options by which you can change this color coding also, but for this video I will not go into details of that. That is all for heat map. Now, I will move into volcano plot another very useful tool for representation overall representation of high throughput data particularly data coming from gene expression experiment like microarray or RNA, RNA seq data. 
To draw the Volcano plot, I will use ggplot2, a special package for graphical representation of data which is very powerful. We will discuss some feature of ggplot2 separately in another video, but here you just follow me how to use ggplot2 function for particularly drawing the uh, Volcano plot. So, you need to install ggplot2, hope you may have already installed it and then you have to call ggplot2 from your library to and load it in your uh, workspace before you execute it. So, the first line of my script is doing that. Now, I will read the data and then I will explain what type of data I have and why I want a volcano plot and what is a volcano plot. So, the data is in a CSV file and I will read that. Let me open this data to see what I have and what I want to plot. The first column of this data is gene symbol. This can be a microarray feature name also. And the second column is log to fold change. So, that is fold change in transformed in log to log base 2 and the second third column the last column is p value. Now, let me first explain what is log to fold change. Suppose you are doing a microarray experiment or even if you are doing a uh, small scale uh, uh, quantitative PCR experiment or a large scale RNA seq experiment, you always have a re reference sample, right? Many a time that can be untreated sample and your experimental sample can be the treated sample. Whereas, in some cases you may have a normal cell whereas, the, that will be the reference sample whereas, the cancer cell will be or the tumor will be the experimental sample. Now, when you measure gene expression either by quantitative PCR or microarray or RNA-seq, you always represent the data in terms of fold change, a relative measure with respect to which is in my reference sample that is untreated sample. So, I can say the fold change as I have written here is equal to reading in treated divided by reading in untreated, reading in the disease cell divided by reading in the untreated cell. Now, you can easily understand fold change can be bigger than 1, fold change can be less than 1. When fold change is bigger than 1, that means the reading in treated sample the expression of the genes in the treated sample is more than the expression in the untreated sample. So, that is called upregulation of that gene in that treated sample. Whereas, if one, if the fold change is less than 1, you will call it down regulation. It is easy to remember, but it is not very intuitive. So, what usually we do in high throughput data analysis is that we log transform that fold change data. That means, I take a log of that. Then what will happen if I take a log of that any raw value any raw fold change value if it is bigger than 1 then it will remain a positive value. Whereas, if you take a fold change value which is less than 1 less than 1 means it is fraction right. So, if I take a fraction and take a log of that I get a negative value. So, if I log transform the data and then if I short the data in excel sheet or in R or anywhere, you can easily recognize okay, the positive values are up regulated gene, the negative values are down regulated gene. It is much more intuitive for us to understand. Now, when you are taking log, you can take any base, you can take 2, 10, 100, whatever value you want as a base, right. Now, for microarray and RNA seq, this type of experiment where you are doing gene expression data, many a time conventionally we take 2 as a base. Why do you do that? It is a convention. See, I may have done an experiment, suppose by quantitative PCR also, simply in by real time PCR machine in your lab. You have seen the expression of a particular gene has changed 1.2 fold, and you have done statistical test, and that change is consistent and statistically significant. But remember, 1.2 fold change in gene expression may not affect the biology of the process. That means, although this data is statistically significant and you repeatedly actually get some something close to 1.2 or 1.5, but that does not mean that fold change has any relevance in the biology that you are studying. So, many a times within the community, biology community, we usually consider that any change, any fold change which is twofold right either twofold up regulation or twofold down regulation 
then only there is any biological relevance. So that means the fold change has to be bigger than two fold, right? So if it is up regulated, then it should be two or more than two. If it is down regulated, it should be 0.5 or less than 0.5. So that is why when we do the log transformation, we take log base 2. Then what will happen? If the fold change is originally is 2, log 2 of that will give me plus 1. And if the fold change is 0.5, it will give me minus 1. And easily you can easily identify which one is up regulated and down regulated from the sign and from the value I can understand whether those up regulation or down regulation are biologically relevant or not. Now let me go back to my data again. So this first uh, column is for gene sim symbol, second column is for fold to log to fold change of for this gene, each of this gene, right? And the third column, the last column is for p value. What is this p value? they must have, I have taken a data from a data set, they must have performed some sort of statistical test to check whether this change in gene expression between the treated and untreated, disease and the normal is actually statistically significant or not. And from that test, they have calculated some p value. If the p value is small and below a cutoff, I will say it is statistically significant. So, that raw p value is given in the last column. So, now I want to create a plot where I will represent this fold change in log 2 scale and the p value for each of this gene in one single plot. Remember, in this example, for example, I have 13,421 observation. That means, I have data for 13,421 genes. For each gene, I have log 2 transform fold change data and the corresponding p value data and I want to visualize that in one single diagram in such a way that I can understand which are the genes or how many of these genes are actually up regulated and down regulated and such up regulation and down regulation is biologically relevant and statistically significant. Two things together. I want to visualize biological relevance as well as statistical significance for all of this gene expression change in one single plot. For that, I will use Volcano plot. I will be using ggplot uh, to create the Volcano plot. Uh, let me explain briefly what uh, the command uh, that I am using to do that. So, the first thing is I am calling ggplot function and then as an argument I am telling the data is v dot data. And then I have something uh, written as AES, it stands for aesthetic. We will discuss in detail about these when we will discuss ggplot separately. So, AES function, I am saying that okay, in the x axis, the horizontal axis, you put the log to fold change data. And I am also saying in y axis, you put minus log 10 of p value. So, I am not plotting in vertical axis the p value directly. I am taking a log 10 transformation of that, that means log of p value base 10 and I am putting a minus sign before that because if you remember these p values are fractions. So, if I take log it will become negative so that to make that value positive I am making it minus. So, the bigger this value is I have higher statistical significance, right? So, these two will be the axis and then I am writing plus I am adding another property to this plot where I am saying geom underscore point. That means, ggplot will understand that I want to create a scatter plot. So, that information will be stored in plot1 object and then I will plot that. So, here is my volcano plot. It is called volcano because it looks like eruption from a volcano right, where the mouth of the volcano is here in the near the 0 in the horizontal axis. Each of these black dots, it is a scatter plot, is those one of those uh, 13,000 genes. And they are positioned based upon their log to fold change value, which is coming from the second column of my data. And the vertical axis is minus log 10 p value. For example, this higher one, this has a p value which is very small, 
that is why the minus log 10 value is very high and it is uh, uh, fold change value in log 2 scale is somewhere near minus 1, slightly bigger than smaller than minus 1. So, now this is a Volcano plot. In this all these 13,000 genes has been shown and there are two properties, one whether they are statistically significant or not on the, and their fold change is biologically relevant or not, I want to visualize. How do I want to visualize? Okay. Any gene whose expression is bigger than 1, that means log 2 fold change is bigger than 1 on this right hand side, I should consider that they have a biologically relevant fold change. Whereas, any genes having log 2 fold change lesser than or equal to minus 1, I will say they have biologically relevant down regulation. Similarly, along the vertical axis, I have to check a draw a line which correspond to suppose I take a cutoff of 0 0.05. So, minus log uh, of 0 0.05 base 10 that should be my cutoff in the vertical axis and any data above that represent statistically significant data. So, let me draw this vertical and horizontal line. One vertical line to represent the cutoff for the p value, whereas two horizontal, uh, one horizontal line for the cutoff for p value and two vertical lines to represent the fold change up regulated, down regulated. To achieve that, what I will do? I will modify this plot by adding some vertical and horizontal line. So, my cutoff for the in the horizontal axis is minus 1 and plus 1, whereas in the vertical axis the cutoff is 0 0.05. So, I am taking the plot 1, if you remember we have created the plot 1 object here which is uh, shown here in the plot tab. Now, I will take that plot 1 and on that I will add two horizontal vertical line and one horizontal line. And in ggplot it is very easy to do by simply add a symbol. I will add the vertical line and the horizontal line. What will be the vertical line? I am calling the function geom underscore v line and then I am saying okay, draw a vertical line having intercept at minus 1 and plus 1 and the color of that vertical line should be blue. Not just that, I am putting another plus sign to represent that okay, I want to put another argument here. I want to draw a horizontal line for that I am calling geom underscore h line and then I am saying okay, horizontal line the y intercept for that should be minus log 10 of 0 0.05. So, my cutoff of p value is 0 0.05 and I want the color of the line is also blue and I will plot that. This is my new plot. Now, it is much more meaningful. I have two vertical line, one at plus 1, one is at minus 1. Any value starting from plus 1 and higher are genes which are up regulated. So, I can see here I have uh, 5 genes which are up regulated and I have another vertical line at minus 1, any genes at minus 1 or below minus 1 right on the left hand side of this vertical line are biologically relevant down regulated. Whereas, the cutoff for p value 0 0.05 is this horizontal line, any data, any gene fold change data above that line have statistically significant change in fold of expression. So, if I look it comprehensively, on the right hand side I have 5 genes which have biologically relevant upregulation as well as their change in gene expression are statistically significant. Whereas, on the left hand side again I have 5 genes which have biologically relevant down regulation at the same time they are statistically significant. Rest of the genes, rest of those 13,000 something genes, they many of them has statistical significance that is why they are above this horizontal line, vertical, horizontal line of cut up of point uh, p equal to 0 0.05, but they are not biologically relevant. Their change in fold expression, uh, fold change are not biologically relevant. So, I will discard them from my subsequent analysis. I will focus on these 5 and 5 
10 genes. Once I have this volcano plot, now I may want to add some further element on it. For example, I may want to color code the upregulated genes and the downregulated genes. How can I do that? I will show that. To mark those genes which are upregulated and downregulated at the same time they are statistically significant in their fold change, I had to create a new variable, a new column in my data set. So, what I am doing here? I have v dot data and there I am adding a new column called diff expressed, differentially expressed and I am assigning no to them. That means a new column will be created where all the entries will be no at first. Now, in the next line what I am doing? I am again calling the same thing. I am saying v dot data and putting the dollar sign and I am calling this variable diff express which I just created and put no values there and I am taking that column, that data of that column and then what I am doing? I am asking to check some logic. What is the logic? If the data has those rows where fold log to fold change is greater or equal to 1 and where the p value is less than 0 0.05. So, that means now r will go to all those rows of my data where log to fold change is greater or equal to 1 and the p value is less equal to 0 0.05, then in this last column that I created diff expressed for those rows in that diff expressed, I will replace this no by up. Whereas, in the next line, I am doing the same thing, but I am giving a different logic. What I am giving the logic? My logic here is go to all those rows where log to fold change is less equal to minus 1 and the p value is less equal to 0 0.05, then in the diff express column for those rows you write down. So, if I do that, let me execute that. I have executed it. Now, I will go back and check my data uh, file v dot data. Now, you can see I have a new column diff expressed and in this column some genes are written as down. See the fold change value is minus 1.2. So, it is lesser than 1 minus 1 and the p value is much smaller than 0 0.05. So, it is statistically significant and biologically relevant down regulation that is why down is written here. Whereas, for the vcam 1 the fold change is 1.8 log to fold change. So, it is bigger than plus 1 and the p value is also satisfying our uh, requirement. So, it is marked as up whereas, this fifth gene we are marking as no because its gene expression change fold change is within plus 1 and minus 1. So, the fold change is not biologically uh, relevant and uh, that is why although the statistical p value is good enough it is marked as no. So, now I have a new column where each gene is marked either as down, up or no. Now, I will use that information to color code my volcano plot. To create the volcano plot, uh, I have uh, added lo lots of feature along with the ggplot uh, uh, basic uh, option that I have used earlier. So, the first thing is ggplot I am using, I am saying the data and I am using the same aesthetic where x equal to log to fold change and y is minus log to a p value. Now, I have added another argument here in aesthetic that is color, color equal to diff expressed. That means, I am asking that you color this data point based on the values in this column called diff expressed. And then I am asking to create the scatter plot just like the previous one. Here I have made a change, I, there are multiple themes, inbuilt themes in ggplot2. So, I am saying use the minimal theme. So, uh, this background thing will get bit cleared. You can skip that. Then I am saying, okay, you have to manually color that. Do not use the default color. What should be the color? The values should be red, black, and green. Then 
obviously I am drawing the vertical lines for the gene expression fold change uh, cutoff and the horizontal line for my uh, p value cutoff. So, let me execute it and draw the plot. Now, you can see the picture, the plot, Volcano plot is much more clear. So, I have all the data points, all these 13,000 data point and I have shown the cutoffs by this horizontal and vertical blue line. Upregulated genes are green colored and the downregulated gene are red colored and the legend is been written here, so that one can understand which one is downregulated, which one is upregulated the black color is for those genes which does not satisfy our requirement for biological relevance and statistical significance. Now, in many diagram, many a time in many paper, you will see people will add the name or the label for each of these genes. So, now let me show you how to add the name of those gene or the label for each of these data point. To achieve the labeling of those upregulated and downregulated gene, I have to play some trick with my data file. What I will do? I will add another column to my data where the label will be written. How I will do that? Okay. I am taking my v dot data and then I am adding a new column called g label, a new variable. So, I am writing v dot data dollar sign g label and then I am assigning n a value to this, in nothing n a to that. And then I will replace this n a with certain things. What I will do? Okay. Now, once I have created that new column and filled them with n a, I am taking that column. So, I am taking v dot data dollar sign g label. So, that column is taken and then I am using some logic operation here. What is the logic operation? I will go to each row by using this statement here v dot data dollar diff express and I will check if diff express is not equal to no. Remember, in the diff expressed column, I have either written each row is marked as down, up or no. No means there is no change in expression. We are not uh, interested in them. We are interested to label only those genes which are upregulated or downregulated. So, I am using the logic that find those rows where diff express is not equal to no. That means, they are either up or down and then what you do? you replace this n a in those row for the g label column with the gene symbol corresponding to those rows. How do I get the corresponding to those rows? So, again I use the same logic that I have used here. So, I am creating a new column where the label will be written. What will be the label? Label will be the gene names, but those will be present only, only on those rows where the differential expression is either up or down. Let me do it, it will be much clear if I open the fly file and check it. It is done, let me open the data to see what changes I have made. Okay. Now, you see I have a new column G label, gene label and take the fifth one. The fifth one, the diff express column says no, because its gene expression is within plus 1 and minus 1. So, it is not biologically relevant. So, as it is no, the G label is N A. But whereas, for the other four genes which are above, their corresponding gene name is present in the G label for each of this row. Similarly, come to the upregulated one, VCAM and LCMT2, you can see the G label row column has the corresponding gene names. So, by using that logic operation, I have created a new column where the gene names for each of these upregulated and downregulated genes are listed there. Now, I will use ggplot and ask it to use this g label column information to write down the name of these genes on those dot, dot correspond point to each of these gene in my uh, volcano plot.
So now I will create the plot. I am again using ggplot and you have the usual all statements uh, for argument like the data, the aesthetic and in the aesthetic in the previous example I have used color by differentially expressed color information, diff expressed information. Now I have added a new argument in aesthetic. It is a label equal to g label. That means ggplot will understand that okay, I have to label the data points based on the information present in the g label column of this data set. Now I have to make another change, I will come to that. So the rest of the thing like genome, geom point, that means I am just a scatter plot, I am maintaining the theme minimal, so the background color is off. The color scale again, uh, scale of the color is manual. So I am saying red, blue and green the way I have just done now and then I have the vertical lines and the horizontal line. The last one is a new one. This is geom underscore text function. This will tell the ggplot that you have to write the labels, right? Labels based upon the information present in g label column. Remember if it is na, ggplot will not write anything for that particular data. So I will execute it. I have the volcano plot now which looks quite professional. So this is a neat volcano plot where all the 13,000 genes data are presented. Each of these gene is a dot. They are color coded. If they are black, that means they do, does not, they do not satisfy the biological relevance and statistical significance. That is why they are marked as no. Whereas the green dots for which I have the name written here, VCAM1, FAM229A, uh, TFM like that, these are the upregulated genes and they satisfy both the criteria that the fold change should be bigger than 2 as well as their fold change should be statistically significant and that is why they are above the horizontal line and beyond this vertical line uh, uh, for 1. Whereas this red uh, genes for which I, we have written the name for example RPP21 is one example. It is uh, on the left hand side of the minus 1 vertical line. So that means its fold change is biologically relevant. It has a down regulation as well as its down regulation is statistically significant because it is above this horizontal line of cutoff of p equal to 0 0.05. So now in my subsequent study I can focus on these 5 and 510 genes and build new experiment or perform some new analysis. So that is all for this uh, lecture on volcano plot and heat map. There are many dedicated tools to draw heat map and volcano plot which comes with packages which has been created for analysis of microarray or RNA-seq data. If you are using those packages for detailed trunky analysis of your data, uh, microarray or RNA-seq data starting from the raw data up to different diagrams, then you may use those tools, they are inbuilt tools to draw the volcano, volcano plot and the heat map. Some of them will have additional uh, utilities uh, and additional features. Here in this lecture, I have shown you the inbuilt heat map uh, function and the scatter plot option available with ggplot2. That is all for this video. Thank you for learning with me today.